Hello, welcome to my channel on investing. In this video, I will talk about top 5 dividend stocks in Warren Buffett's portfolio. I will also attempt to tell a story behind each stock and why Berkshire Hathaway bought into it. The first high yielder is Kraft Heinz with a forward yield of 4.62%. Berkshire has 3% allocation to KHC and is one of the largest shareholders in the company with 27% stake. Buffett bought Kraft Heinz to own a company recognized for its brands and stable cash flows. Kraft Heinz has way over 50% market share in selling ketchup in the US and Europe. But it doesn't sell ketchup only. It also boasts many other brands under its umbrella. Boca Burger, Oscar Mayer, Philadelphia Cream Cheese and Primal Kitchen are a few to name. Since 2015, KHC has reduced its debt, but its financial performance was not good. The rise of private labels created a lot of competition and many of its products began falling out of favor. Also, some people put blame on 3G, a Brazilian private equity firm that co-owned KHC with Berkshire. 3G is known for its tight budgeting tactics. This may have contributed to too much leaning out of Kraft Heinz and its later decline. We may say that KHC was a value trap for Warren Buffett in a hindsight. Even today the dividend yield looks attractive, but will the company be able to shake off its stagnation in growth and be able to come out on top with its own brands? That's a hard question to answer. Buffett admitted himself that he made a mistake and overpaid for Kraft Heinz. The fact that they had to take a $3 billion write down in 2019 speaks volumes. Still, Berkshire Hathaway continues holding on to KHC. Probably they have grounds to believe that there is a chance for a turnaround to be realized. The second on the list is Chevron, with a forward yield of 4.1%. Berkshire started buying Chevron stock in 2020. Today it represents 6% of its portfolio and is the fifth largest holding. Everyone talks about peak oil and how wind and solar will take over the world. And yet the world continues chugging along on oil, at least for the foreseeable future. And Buffett made a bet on that future. Stable cash flows and prudent investments tick many boxes for Warren Buffett. Recently, Chevron acquired Hess and consolidated its market share even more. The main risk for the company is its exposure to hydrocarbons. If transition to alternative energy accelerates, Chevron may see its fortunes decline. The banking giant Citigroup is the third on the list with a yield of 3.4%. Berkshire Hathaway initiated its stock position in 2022. Now it represents about 1% of its portfolio. After bottoming out at $38 a share in 2023, the stock had a pretty good run up. Although it's a far cry from what Citigroup used to be after its near bankruptcy or actual bankruptcy in 2009. In 2022, Citi was trading at a sizable discount to its book value. The price to book value was less than 0.5. In comparison, many other banks such as JP Morgan Chase or Capital One trade at multiples around one or more. Warren Buffett made a bet that Citigroup would succeed in its turnaround plan. Jane Fraser, the current CEO, joined Citi in 2021. She wants to reposition the bank, simplify its operations and spin off unprofitable businesses. The turnaround is still in the process. Citi is a huge and a very complex organization with many departments. Probably the regulatory compliance at this bank is a nightmare. And even the management itself acknowledged that they won't be able to hit their profitability targets two or even three years from now on and there is always a room for mistake. So as we see, this bet is not that simple with lots of moving parts. The fourth stock on the list is Ali Financial with a yield of 3.2%. Buffett initiated this position in early 2022. As of today, it represents less than 0.5% of Berkshire's portfolio. You probably noticed by now that Buffett loves investing in banks. Since his investment, Ali bottomed out at $22 a share and has been on a recovery trajectory. Ali Financial provides various types of credit and commercial banking services. Among them are car loans, mortgages, insurance and corporate loans. After having a blast performance in 2021, Ellie's fortunes have declined since then. The company's bread and butter business is providing car loans. This accounts for over 60% of its net revenues. 
Higher interest rates lowered profitability margins by a lot. As credit got more expensive, default rates ticked up a bit too. In response, Ali had to increase its provisions for credit losses. Also, used car prices have declined since 2022. This led to consumers taking smaller car loans, which negatively affected Ali too. Also, Ali had funding issues in the past. A typical bank relies on regular customer deposits for its capital. If you have checking or savings accounts with major banks, you know that they pay virtually nothing in interest. Conversely, Ali relied on more expensive sources of funding. Among them are broker debt, public and private bonds. These sources of finances came with higher interest rates and were a drag on Ali's performance. Since then, Ali shifted to retail deposits, which account for 88% of its funding. This helped the company a lot to improve its profitability. But what can help Ali in the future? For starters, if the Fed lowers interest rates, that's gonna be a big help. Also, higher consumer spending on cars would help Alice as well. But of course, this is all questionable and nobody knows if it's gonna happen. For instance, the Fed was reluctant to lower interest rates due to persistently high inflation rate. And also, it seems like the consumer car sales are entering in some sort of downswing. And the final Warren Buffett's top dividend pick is Coca-Cola. Yes, the good old Coke that Berkshire Hathaway invested in 1988. Coke has a 3.1% yield and represents 7% of Berkshire Hathaway portfolio. The company doesn't need much introduction. Its global products, brand and strong cash flows are among the things that keep Buffett invested. If we look at total returns for Coke that include both price appreciation and dividends, they were not spectacular. But about half of these returns were in the form of dividends. Coca-Cola is a dividend machine with a history of consistent payout policy for almost 30 years. There were some temporary dividend cuts, but almost always Coke got itself back on track to grow its payouts. Still, there's a worldwide pushback against sugary carbonated drinks. Many cities, including Philadelphia, San Francisco and Seattle, even imposed a so-called soda tax. Unfortunately for Coke, its heavy reliance on soda may backfire long term or at least pose challenges to revenue growth. The company is working to diversify its product lineup outside of soda. For now, it's a work in progress. Finally, almost two-thirds of Coke's revenues originate outside of the US. This led to a lot of exposure to foreign currency fluctuations, especially lately. So these are top 5 dividend stocks in Berkshire Hathaway portfolio. The question is, should you or I go and buy them? The answer is, it all depends. There are three main points to remember before pushing the buy button. First, the presence of these stocks in Buffett's portfolio does not serve as a stamp of approval for buying these stocks. We should still do our own due diligence because, I mean, Buffett also makes mistakes. Second, Warren Buffett can change his mind tomorrow and sell these stocks. For instance, in 2023, Berkshire Hathaway owned a US bank corp stock, which had a 4% yield. To a dividend investor, that's a great number. And yet, Berkshire Hathaway sold the stake for one or another reason. This leads me to the third point. Warren Buffett doesn't mind receiving dividend income from his investments. But this is a secondary consideration in his investment decision making. His most important criterion has to do with cash flows growth. To him, it doesn't really matter whether the company pays or not dividends. Just look at Buffett's investments in Apple that carries a measly 0.6% yield. I will have a separate video on why Buffett doesn't like paying out dividends, especially when it comes to Berkshire Hathaway. What's more, Warren Buffett avoids small companies altogether, even though they may have great potential, as well as dividend yields for small investors. And the reason is very simple. Berkshire Hathaway got way too big for these small fries and invest in them to make any difference for its performance. That is it for this video. I hope you learned something new today and you got something out of it. If you did, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more content on investing. Thank you for watching.